So in the previous video, we worked on our application products.go file. And then when we were creating our function add product, we realized that we need a price package, we need a products package, and we need a repository inside the products package. So we started working on our price.go file, and we created a struct called price. And similarly, we started creating this products.go file and repository.go file. So now in this video, we'll work on the products.go file. And also, if possible, on the repository.go file. So most importantly, this belongs to products package. And you will import a couple of things. But for now, all we need is errors. So firstly, let's define a st an ID. Why? Why did I pick ID? Because I need an ID for the products. Right. So let's start with the ID. It's a string. And we'll define two variables to handle empty ID and empty names, so two errors. Okay. So this is why I imported the errors package because now I'll use the errors package to say, so I'll say errors dot name empty product ID. And here I'll say errors dot new empty product name. All right. So you have a product. Now, in a in a shop like an e-commerce kind of a shop kind of a setting, right? The most important thing is usually the product because that's what you see, that's what the user interacts with, that's what the user is here to buy. So this is kind of central to our entire project. So product struct is very central. Um, now to define the product, the best way is to obviously create a struct because it has to have a couple of different uh, variables. So it needs to have an ID of type ID. It needs to have a name, it needs to have a description, it needs to have a price. For price, you already know that you know we have created our own package called price and this is the price that we want to reference so this product will have this price this the price itself is a struct so you're saying that price is of type price dot price where here the p is small because this is the package name here the p is capital because this is the struct name okay id is clear it's id but i'll give tabs out here so that I'll give like proper spacing so that everything just makes more sense name is again a string and your description as a string. So this is your product. Now you'll have a function called new product. Why do you need this function? Because in our add product function, we had called this function new product. It didn't exist at that time. It takes name, description, price, and ID. Right? So in this package, this now see you can have all of the functions just one file, right? But this is just the legit way of doing things in the sense um, having a better structure, better project structure, uh, dividing the files into proper projects or folders, right? So just it just becomes more scalable when more and more team members work on a project. Um, you can tell them, okay, these folders belong to you or these you know files belong to you so that if whenever we make any changes, make this in these files itself. So just give them modules instead of giving them the entire project, for example, you know, give them access to just a particular module, a particular uh, file. So this is why we follow project structure. This is why we follow, uh, you know, proper uh, separation. You can call it separation of concern, but I, I won't call it that right now. But I'll say at least there's separation, you know, of the duties to be performed uh, right now. A little bit, at least a little bit. We don't have complete separation of concern here. So that's why we follow these kind of project structures. So that's why, you know, we could have written this function here itself, but we created a new package for it. That's why we're writing this function. Right, and you already know it takes an ID, it takes name, it takes description, it takes in the price. Now, if this function is called new product, what is it supposed to return? It's supposed to return a product, <laughs> right? And uh, it'll just have. Uh, it might also return an error to us. So that's why I've written error. Now the way to define 
uh, write this in Golang is you just you can't just write the name of the arguments. You also have to define the types. So you say it's type ID string. Now I know you don't have to do this in JavaScript, and people who are coming from JavaScript might feel that hey, you don't have to do this in JavaScript. Why do you have to do that in uh, Golang? It's because Golang is a statically typed, static typed language, and it's very strict with type. It does not tolerate fools. So it's a very common saying with Golang. Golang does not tolerate any fools. If you don't know what's going to come into the function, you're an idiot. <laughs> That's what Golang is saying, basically. You better know what's coming into this function, only then Golang will accept it. It just minimizes all the errors and issues to a very, very large extent. You won't get any, or like close to zero, uh, you know, inconsistencies or uh, surprises with Golang. That's what I love about it. I mean, for production, I mean, and, and the more critical uh, microservices. So I use microservices, right? I'll have JavaScript like Node.js microservices running and Rust, Python, Golang. If the, all the critical logic, everything related to payments and user flows and all of that will always be Golang. I mean, I consult with the biggest companies in the world. I, I you know, help them build tech products. And I always, always depend on Golang for the most critical services, all right? And if I'm saying it, I have more than 10 years of experience, you can take my word and always choose to go with Golang. <laughs> Anyhow, here um, we wanna check the length of ID. It's zero, then you want to return nil. You don't wanna return the product, obviously, right? And you wanna say error empty ID because why not? I mean, you could have just sent an error, but this is a fancier way of returning errors. You have your own defined variables and you have your own. You're using the errors package to create these new types of errors and you're returning that error. So this is a fancier way of doing it, doing the same thing. You can, you can be really crude and just return an uh, error here, but uh, you know, as you grow more and more mature with technology, you would want to have something like this in place, right? Because it's just cleaner, better, easier to understand. In my beginner level projects, I won't have this kind of stuff, right? You'll never find it there. It'll only be uh, in projects like these. And then you'll check for name. I mean, hell, in my in my beginner level projects, you might not even find uh, these kind of checks, actually. So um, if, if the length of name is zero, then also you'll return nil. Error, empty name. Okay, awesome. And then you'll return your product. Product will have ID, name, description, price. And for error, we'll say nil because if the product was created. Why would you return an error? It'll be nil, right? And then we'll need a couple of uh, methods here. right? So I'll create a couple of methods here. Like lock, not couple, but like four or five methods here. So one method will be called ID and it just returns my ID for me. So it returns the ID of the product. That's it does. Okay, then we'll have a function called and we'll we'll be using these methods, right? So that's why we're creating this. We we'll have name and it just returns p dot product name. Then we'll have description right. We'll just return your p dot description. Then comes your price. We'll say func product price price we'll return price dot price. P here is small because this is a package and P here is capital because it's the, this is the struct inside that package that we have defined, right? So using structs defined packages is very easy. Now I know uh, a lot of you who are doing this course with me are advanced developers and you don't want to know such things like why is this P small P capital? But if you go across my YouTube comments, you'll find these kind of questions. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to clear it right now while teaching that, hey, this is, uh, this is what's being returned from this function and this is the package and this is the struct, all right? So we'll return p dot price. We all become what the algorithm wants us to become. 
this is a nice saying that I just found on on the internet. So it says that you don't really have free will. Uh, like you think you are an autonomous uh, autonomous human being. You think you have free will, and that's why you upload videos. But slowly, the algorithm of you, like the YouTube algorithm, could be Instagram or whatever. But in this case, it's YouTube. So whatever YouTube wants me to create, that's what that's the kind of content I'll have to create. I'll have to be mindful of uh, everybody that's watching this kind of content, right? So anyhow. So this was your products file. This is all that you had to do there. Um, now we have our repository file also. Let me do one thing. Let me just create it, uh, like finish it quickly. Okay. So we'll have package products. Again, we'll just import errors. And we'll have an error called not found. Here we'll say product not found. So your repository, it's nothing but just a small little interface which will have save and buy ID. Error ID. Product, comma, error. Amazing. So as you can see, a lot of things are taking shape really quickly. So now this application products thinks it will make a lot more sense. Now in the next video, we'll work a little more on our prize or go file, and then we'll come back to our application products or go file again. All right. So this is where I'll end it here. We are doing a little bit like 10 minutes of work every day, but um, this will eventually lead on to bigger things because the project is quite big. I don't want you to get confused. Take small steps at a time, all right? Understand why the project has been structured, the way it has been structured, why the files have been broken down like this, why the functions are the way they are, all right? All of those things are nuances that you'll pick up as you uh, grow in your Golang career. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.